And we are recapping week 11 and maybe retiring the game of the week song. <laughs> Minnesota and Dallas did not exactly work. But who is qu- trivia question for you two, Dave and Heath? Who is the high score right now in PPR leagues going into Sunday night football? Who's the highest score? Um, Jamal Williams. Brett Maher. <laughs> Only if he gets credit for both 60 yard field goals. Uh, neither of them, I- including quarterbacks, by the way, who is the top scorer? Hmm. Samaj P. Ryan. Okay, it's Tony Pollard. It's Tony Pollard. Uh, terrific game for him. Tony Pollard, 36 points. Joe Burrow, 34. Devontae Adams, 33. P. Ryan has 30. Jamal Williams, 24. Not even a top 10. But- Brett Maher has think? 29. Wow. The second best kicker fantasy performance in the history of the NFL. What? Eight for eight on kicks, including a 50 and a 60 yarder. Wow. Can you guess <laughs> who had the best fantasy day ever? It was in 2010. He scored 29.5. So Mara was just one extra point away. Uh, I don't know. I'm already ashamed. I didn't know that Pollard was the leader in fantasy points. Jay Feely. Wow. All right. All right. This is our show. Kicker trivia for you here. Welcome, everybody. Let's talk about Sunday night or uh, Sunday uh, afternoon, rather, and not Sunday night. We're going to talk about Jamal Williams and Tony Pollard and Samaj P. Ryan. P. Ryan is 13% rostered. Mixon left with a concussion. We'll also tell you about Justin Fields and Matthew Stafford and Kyle Pitts and any other injuries you need to know about. Might be a Long injury for a bad injury for Wandale Robinson. Um, But who's the biggest winner, Dave Richard, of Fantasy Week 11? Oh, I'm not going to go with somebody that everybody is really thinking of as a a surefire winner. In fact, I'm not going to go with one person. I'm going to go with an entire defense, and that's the Washington Commanders. And you might say, hold on, hold on. They played the Houston Texans. Of course, they're going to look good. They look good against Philadelphia last week, and if you look at their schedule moving forward, they're going to look pretty good against the Falcons, against the Giants twice in three weeks. They got the 49ers in week 16. That's going to be tough. Cleveland in week 17 with Deshaun Watson. Okay, that might be tough too. But they're going to get Chase Young back into that mix of pass rush, not saying that he's going to make their defense so much better than it is because it's already good. And I think this is a DSC that you're going to find off the waiver wire and you're going to feel good using for the next, well, three of the next four weeks. I'm really encouraged by what I've seen from Ron Rivera's unit. All right, yeah, and, and the team in general. I mean, they are knocking on the door. They they could easily make the playoffs. Heath, who's the biggest loser of the week? I had sent Thomas a text last week asking how I could clip things off of our podcast or off of YouTube if I wanted to use them. And his response was basically, you're too dumb. Just ask me what you want clipped, and I will do it for you. And I said, no, really. My, I'm I just, familiar. I just want to know how to do it. And he's like, no, I can do it for you. So... um I would like to request the the very end of Dave's uh, Washington Commanders DST rant as a, a clip, please. Um, specifically, the part about Ron Rivera's unit. Um, <laughs> I will say the biggest winner is Najee Harris. A second consecutive week with 90-plus rushing yards. He got into the end zone twice, caught a few passes, um looks like we've come out of the bye and i'm not going to say the steelers running game is fixed but it doesn't look as miserable as it did before the bye i am encouraged that he might just be a number two running back now and not a flex um good week for Raji harris it's two weeks in a row that the offensive lines looked okay i'm not ready to say that they look great but yes coming off their bye the offensive line does seem a little bit different indianapolis next week I think he's still going to be a number two running back. I think I think you're right. He, I think he's going to – I think he's earned it. Yeah. Well, Najee, let's not forget, foot injury. So maybe the week off, the bye week helped him get – you know, maybe he's moving and, further past and, that. And Jalen Warren got hurt today, which is he, – He had a hamstring injury today, yes. Um, I don't know that that would have had impact on Najee having 20 carries or 90 yards. But well, he had yeah. four catches and for 26 yards. So Yeah. That helps. Anything else on that? Are we good? No, I think. Okay. There's okay. another Steelers winner, but you're, you yeah. can guess who it is, and we'll talk about him later. 
Yeah, uh, George Pickens. Dopey McDoperson. I hope he gets to play next week. Yeah, he got ejected in the final seconds of the game, and he also dropped a touchdown. He would have had a 49-yard touchdown late in the game, would have had an enormous game, George Pickens. But we will talk about him a little bit later. Uh, the Bengals did get the win in that game. Uh, we have a lot of great content for you. Tomorrow on Monday, we have Beyond the Box score. We've got Fantasy Football Today in 5 if you want the five-minute version of this show. And, uh, you know, our live streams, we're not going to have a Thursday live stream in the afternoon. There's something going on on Thursday this week that's precluding us from doing our live stream. But we will have a pretty typical week in terms of our content. We'll have a podcast for you every morning. Really, our schedule is not changing much, uh, if at all, except for canceling the Thursday afternoon live stream on YouTube. But if you don't watch our show, you want to see it on demand. If you want to watch it live, go to YouTube.com slash Fantasy Football Today. And for those of you who are wondering, hey, where did your live shows go? Where did your long uh, full-length episodes go? They're hard to find now uh, on YouTube. Hit the live tab, and you can see all of the full-length shows, the ones that have already finished. Uh, they get archived under the live tab. All right, the three big running back winners this week were Jamal Williams, who scored three, three or three, right? Three, three. yeah, Swift scored one. They, they gave one to Swift at the end just to be nice. That was nice. Uh, Jamal Williams scored three rushing touchdowns. He did not have a catch. He had 17 carries for 64 yards, but now leads the NFL in touchdowns, non-quarterback touchdowns. 72% started. Tony Pollard. Zeke was back. Zeke had a great game. He scored twice. Pollard had two goal line chances, couldn't get in. Zeke came in nope. and scored. He scored again later, but Pollard was the star. He had 15 carries for 80 yards. He had six catches for 109 yards and two touchdowns, and he was started in 91% of leagues. And then you got the waiver wire guy, Samaj P. Ryan who, uh, you know, Mixon concussion, what does that mean? Probably means misses one game, but P. Ryan, 13% rostered, caught three touchdowns today. Um, Dave, anything to say, any value change on Jamal Williams or Tony Pollard here? No, I think you can feel good about starting Pollard, and everybody did. He was started in over 90% of CBS Sports Leagues. Played on 64% of the snaps, through the first three quarters only, no point in paying attention to the fourth quarter. Total blowout. Zeke had him beat on third and fourth downs and inside the 10, but it wasn't by much. I, I, I love the explosiveness, and this was a great sign from the Cowboys coaching staff saying, you know what? He's earned a big role. He's going to get a big role. Zeke stealing goal line touchdowns, that's going to stink, but Adam, you mentioned it. They tried to give Pollard the opportunity. He just couldn't get it done, but he did get it done in other ways. He's he's startable as at minimum a flex, at maximum a number two fantasy running back. Would you guys rather have Tony Pollard or Najee Harris rest of season? Pollard. Same. Ooh, wow. All right. Well, I, not that I disagree or anything, but let's talk about that. And then, you know what? Let's throw Jamal Williams in there. So how about ranking Jamal Williams, uh, Tony Pollard, Najee Harris rest of season? Pollard, Jamal, Najee. I think I'm going to come out the same way on that, but... I imagine that Najee's value is is rising to the point where you might be able to get a little bit more in trade for him than Jamal Williams, but they'll be they'll be close in value, and that's what I think of when we discuss rest of season. Who's who could you get? What can you get more for from which player in a deal? Uh, Jamal led the way. It was again a three headed monster for the Lions. Jamal Williams, forty eight percent of the snaps, five of nine inside the ten. I think everybody kind of expected that. He technically led the way on third and fourth downs, too. Five of 13 snaps was more than Justin Jackson and DeAndre Swift each had. Okay, I'm doing some quick math here. So in the first... Square root 81, go. <laughs> in the first seven games of the season before the Zeke injury, Tony Pollard averaged 10.1 PPR fantasy points per game, which is probably very similar to Najee Harris. Um, so... With Zeke back now, and they have a short week, so I'll see. I'm curious to see what happens there. But with Zeke back, uh, do you think Tony Pollard has a bigger role than he had in the first seven weeks before the Zeke injury? Yes. Yeah. That, I, we wouldn't suggest Pollard being the best of the three running backs if yeah. we thought that Zeke was just going to come back and he would be the guy playing 55, 65% of the snaps. It's Pollard now. But he was supposed to be limited today, Zeke, you know? I mean, this was yeah. not unexpected. I, I never know what to expect when a coach says limited. And I, I don't I don't think they go back to unlimiting him. It's a totally different thing. And I know that he had made big plays on 8 to 10 carries a game before. But 
to see him do what he's done the last couple of games, the last month really, it, it's not feasible to me to think that they're going to go back to giving him 10 touches a game and he's going to go back to scoring 10 PPR points a game. I, I know Zeke's going to be heavily involved and it seems like the way to accomplish that is just throw the ball to Tony Pollard five times as well, which they'd really gone away from this year, but that's something that's been a big part of their offense over the past two or three years with Dak Prescott. And so I, I just think that Zeke probably is going to have 18 carries. Pollard's going to have 12 and Pollard's going to catch four or five passes. Okay, guys, let's talk about a couple of quarterbacks that people might be a bit concerned about right now. A couple of stud quarterbacks. Are they? Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. Josh Allen has now, let's see, his last four games, 21.6, 24.8, 21.6, and now 14.6 fantasy points in six-point per passing touchdown leagues. Lamar Jackson, meanwhile, has scored fewer than 20 fantasy points in six of his last seven games. That is crazy. Are you guys worried about Lamar Jackson and or Josh Allen? I can't be worried about Josh Allen. I, this was a weird week for Buffalo. They only practiced one day. They looked way out of sync early on against Cleveland. And then they kicked it up a notch, and he looked pretty good he, commanding the offense. He just didn't have crazy good fantasy numbers. He can't really pin it on the elbow. Uh, he threw more deep passes, deep targets this week than he did last week. I, I'm I'm gonna start him. He's a must start quarterback against Detroit on Thanksgiving. I might have some reservations if he has a bad game again then, because he's got the Patriots the week after that. But I, I'm okay starting him, and I'm mostly okay with Lamar Jackson. But the fact that I'm mostly okay is still it, it's still a down arrow. Lamar Jackson is supposed to be a weekly must start, no doubt about it, contender to get you 30 to 40 fantasy points. He hasn't been doing it. And I just, I, I haven't taken a close enough look to realize what's going on. I didn't pay that much attention to the game today, but I did see the final stats. And there were moments where he was just making some not great plays. He's not running as much as he used to. So that could probably be an issue too. And he hurt one of his offensive linemen. Ronnie Stanley could be out because of him falling on Stanley's leg. Look, I, I, I think if you've got Lamar Jackson, it's not a bad idea to just, Keep an eye on what's out there at quarterback in case things do get ugly. Er. Er, er. Yeah. Heath, what about you? Allen, Jackson, any major concerns here? I mean, if I wanted to be a troll, I could say, you know, he had one touchdown and four interceptions in his last two games. Josh Allen did three touchdowns and six interceptions in his last three games. And so they turned him into a game manager today. They ran the ball 33 times, only threw it 27 times, and they won. So they might want to continue down that path against a Detroit Lions team they can probably beat doing that way. Um, but you wouldn't do that. You're not a troll. Right. Um, I hmm. I think it's interesting that the low pass volume in this game, and it's he's now 218 or fewer passing yards in three of his last four games. And in those four games, he has four touchdowns and six interceptions. That Dave mentioned... Lamar Jackson not running as much. That might be the key for Josh Allen until he's 100% or until this little decision-making glitch gets fixed is how much is he going to run. And I think that probably, from the indications we've seen this year, depends on how competitive the other team is. He had run a lot, though, in the previous three games. Right. They, they'd had some more competitive games, right? Yeah. Yep. Or or behind. Like that's they what lost, I'm saying. They like, lost two of them. Yeah. I think if they're behind or they have to go score, then they don't hold back the reins quite as much. But you can't be an NFL executive or coach or even fan of the Bills and see Josh Allen and the way he behaves when he's running in the open field and want him to run all the time. Yeah. That's well, bad. the interceptions in the previous three games, I thought basically told the story about his struggles because he threw six interceptions in his previous three games and four of them were inside the 10 yard line and three of them were inside the one yard line. Two of them were in the end zone. So those easily could have been touchdowns. They turned into interceptions and those are eight point swings. Otherwise we wouldn't be talking about this at all. This game just kind of felt like a bad game. Dave, um, the last two weeks, and I don't know, this might be asking too much in a live setting, mm. but has the bills run pass rate in the red zone changed? Because Devin Singletary has four touchdowns in the last two games. I can look it up and let you know. I'm going to need a minute or two. 
the quicker, slicker, looker, upper, Davey. Do your thing. All right, Lamar Jackson. I mean, all the rates are down, too. Everything's bad about Lamar Jackson right now. Completion percentage, yards per attempt, the rushing. The well, his number and one wide receiver is Demarcus Robinson. Okay, whatever it is. You are right. such you are such a Lamar Jackson defender. You will never yes. criticize Lamar Jackson, ever. Do you know why that is? Because why? I have to balance you out. <laughs> no, Because for the majority of Lamar Jackson's career, you've been lower on him than what he's actually been. And I, I just go against what you do. Fine, it, you're not a troll, but let's like let's just be realistic. He doesn't have a number one wide receiver. He's got Mark right. Andrews. That's great. Is he still a must start? I think the landscape at quarterback probably means that he is. I agree that if quarterback was like it has been the years prior to this one, then probably not. Oh well, I didn't say that, but <laughs> um, okay. no, I think that's what like I I would agree that. Like the way he's performing is not what we would expect from a must start quarterback. I still think his upside on a weekly basis is too high. I'm not going to be able to sit him. And there's not even 10 good quarterbacks. And I'm not we, sure don't there's know, eight. we don't even know what Fields' status is. So we'll talk about Justin Fields' status after this quick break on fantasy football today. Back here with your news and notes. Welcome back. Uh, Justin Fields left with a left shoulder injury. He's at the Jets next week, and that's all we know. But he was in pain. He hurt himself late, late in that game. And thankfully, it was his left shoulder. But yes, another very good game for him. But uh, a, a loss for the Bears, and we'll wait and see. Uh, Joe Mixon concussion. Samaj P. Ryan's 13% rostered. And it's, it's just a slam dunk waiver wire ad, right, Heath? Yeah, it's um, it has the, very, the potential to definitely be extremely frustrating. Um, because it's possible that Joe Mixon can come back this week, but you got to go get him. Hey, Dave. Hi. So in the red zone in the first eight weeks of the season, the Buffalo Bills were 57% pass. You're, anything that's 60% or higher is usually really good for the quarterback. 57% yeah. is still pretty good. That, that's lower than what they are. Like they're, I think they're overall 62 or something for the year. So, okay. This is just in the red zone. Last right. two weeks in the red zone, it's really not that different. Fifty. Oh, it is actually fifty-three percent run, forty-seven percent pass. I was looking at the numbers and I didn't see the run part, but obviously that's a huge swing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And two I mean, weeks ago, it's a ten percent. It's a ten-point swing. Two weeks ago, they were talking about how they had to figure out their red zone struggles, and last week, Sean McDermott talked about how they had to run the ball more. So. Yeah, yeah, all right. They're doing a good job of it, and it's it, Devin Singletary is doing a good job. And man, did James Cook look great today against Cleveland? Uh, Matthew Stafford left in the third quarter with another concussion, so that stinks. Uh, they face the Chiefs next next week, and Cooper Cup is likely out six to eight weeks. So, can you drop Cooper Cup? Maybe you, you can if you have to. There's a chance he comes back for your fantasy championship, but there's a chance he doesn't. All this is solved if you just have IR spots. Yeah. Of course. Uh, so in leagues that have our spots. <laughs> okay, that's fair. I think our is, is is it our auction league or salary cap league, whatever you'd like to call it, where we have two spots, and uh, I currently have four players on the IR. I put all these guys maybe. on the IR, and I get an illegal roster message because I didn't have that many IR spots. Mm -hmm. No, there should be more than two. Kyle Pitts left in the third quarter with a knee injury. He was on his way to a very average game. Lamar Jackson was looked at briefly in the third quarter, came back. Uh, Jeff Okuda Jeff Okuda left in the second quarter with a concussion. They get the Bills on Thursday, so he's probably not going to play. And, I, you know, they get those games where one team gets so injured and you hope it's not your team, and the Giants' season basically ended today. because uh, It's over. Nice. Uh, go, no, wait. You're not going to act like – that, no, because that suggests that they were a legitimate seven and two team. Oh, it doesn't matter. They, they, they were one of the most might, fortunate lucky teams. They might ever. lose every game. They well, were always going to. No, that's not true. They're good enough. They're just so injured now. Okay, so what happened to the Giants today? Starting cornerback, Adoree Jackson, one of their best players, returned a freaking punt and hurt his knee. Their other starting cornerback, Fabian Mora, Moreau. Fabian yeah, Moreau. He's a Moreau, not yes, a Moreau. Left in the second half. Uh, a backup safety left, but he was playing a lot because uh, their, their starting safety is out. So that's what Dallas is looking at on Thursday, one of the worst secondaries in football. Wandale Robinson left with a significant knee injury, what they fear is a significant knee injury, and the Giants lost two offensive linemen in this game, and here come the Dallas Cowboys on Thursday for Thanksgiving. 
they're going to feast. <laughs> uh, New England center David Andrews limped off in the third quarter. He has a thigh injury in that second quarter. That might be a big deal. Might mm -hmm. be a long-term injury for David Andrews. They also, the Patriots also lost two offensive linemen. Isaiah Wynn, their left tackle, left with a foot injury. Uh, Chase Edmonds left early. Chase Edmonds was getting the early work for the Broncos. He left in the first quarter. Melvin Gordon fumbled at the one-yard line later in the game, and Latavius Murray ended up with, what, 17 carries? Uh, so he had a busy day. Denver defensive lineman Jonathan Harris left with a knee injury. He's not a big part of their offense. Jalen Warren left. Minnesota left tackle Christian Barrasaw has a concussion. He will not play. He's already been ruled out for the Thursday game against the Patriots. The Steelers lost center Mason Cole. Don't know the severity there. Micah Parsons left in the fourth quarter. We'll see, hopefully he's okay. Uh, Baltimore safety Kyle Hamilton left with a knee injury. The Browns starting center left with an injury. And the Bills lost another defensive lineman, A.J. Epineza. Don't know the severity there, but he left with an ankle injury. Okay. Oh, and the, the Saints entered the game without their two starting defensive ends. They lost another one. Peyton Turner uh, carted off the field in the second quarter. Time for your winners and losers, Heath and Dave. Dave, your winners are Juwan Johnson, 37% rostered, and George Pickens, 58% started, and the Commanders DST, who have scored a touchdown in two straight games. But let's talk about Juwan Johnson and George Pickens. Give me a few tight ends you might drop for Juwan Johnson, who's at San Francisco next week. So I'll get to the tight ends, but I'm just I'm impressed with how he just keeps finding the end zone. And a few weeks back. I, I thought he was just like a, like a garbage time fallacy. Like late in the game, he's getting some lucky touchdowns. That's what happened against Arizona. And then last week, he had an early touchdown. This week, an early touchdown. Not a lot of targets this week. Uh, he's coming off of a game where he had a 25% target share. And he got a lot of work. And I think he's going to just continue to be involved in what New Orleans is doing offensively. Someone to The schedule isn't great. It's San Francisco, it's Tampa Bay, and then a bye. But as streaming tight ends go, and trust me, there were a lot of stinky streaming tight ends that people had today. I think Jawan Johnson's someone that you hop to if you're unhappy with what Tyler Higby gave you, Greg Dulcich, um, Hayden Hurst, Tyler Conklin, Gerald Everett's not even playing on Sunday night. So it, there's going to be a lot of people that are interested in the next tight end off the waiver wire. I think it's going to be Jawan Johnson. George Pickens is the best wide receiver in Pittsburgh. There's no two ways about it. He's making exceptional plays. He's got a connection and rapport with Kenny Pickett. I think it keeps going all year long. Uh, Steelers are certainly going to be in a situation where they're going to have to throw a lot, maybe chasing points like they were on Sunday against Cincinnati. The targets weren't great for him. I think they will be. He's, he's going to be a very, very good receiver. I'm well, looking forward to him being a breakout in 2023. But the, you know, the previous two games, George Pickens combined for 32 yards. So can we really count on this? Yeah, I think he can. I just, every, every time I watch him, he does something great. Last week was not one of those weeks. I will admit that, but I just, I, he's obviously rostered in too many leagues to say he's an ad for crying out loud, but I think he's in the flex conversation every week. Okay. Heath, your winners are Najee Harris. Demarcus Robinson for the Ravens. Nine catches, 128 yards on nine targets. And Latavius Murray, who is rostered in 57% of leagues, started in 23% of leagues. So we talked to Najee a little bit earlier, number two running back going forward. Um, Demarcus Robinson and Latavius Murray, what are your thoughts? Well, I think that, um, what did you say Latavius Murray's roster rate was? 57%, 23% started. Yeah, he's going to be on the waiver wire list for sure and somebody that you probably um, will consider as a high-end flex like we were just waiting for one more Melvin Gordon mistake. Oh, I yeah. don't know how much he gets to play anymore. Um, and he had really, it was kind of disturbing last week because he'd taken over that pass catching role after they traded for Chase Edmonds. It might be Murray and Edmonds now, but there's no question it's Murray in the red zone. It's Murray inside the five yard line. I think it's Murray getting 15 plus touches a week, which even in a bad offense for a slow running back, who's not going to be efficient, makes you a high end flex most weeks. And when we have buys again, probably makes you a low end number two running back. Demarcus Robinson, second consecutive game with at least eight targets. Rashad Bateman's not walking back through that door. Devin DuVernay's doing nothing. I think Demarcus Robinson's their number one wide receiver for the rest of the season. Still number two behind Mark Andrews. Still not a must start guy, but someone that needs to be added off the waiver wire for sure. The same thing that Adam said about Pickens, you can apply to Demarcus Robinson. 
Uh, he did have the eight target game against Tampa Bay. And then last week against new Orleans, four target, one catch, 12 yards. I do think that he's basically in a situation now where he's going to play every week. So uh, the opportunity could be there for him to get six to nine targets per week. And that's, that's not bad. I'd even say that that's nice. As far as him being a, a startable fantasy receiver, uh, for now, I'd still hesitate. I'd call him a bench receiver, maybe potential to be a flex in a deeper league. Um, but the opportunity should be should be there for him. Um, look, Lata- we don't know how long Chase Edmonds is going to be out for. Um, yeah, Melvin that's, Gordon, that's Melvin thing, Gordon right? will have that role. They clearly want to use two running backs every week, but Heath nailed it. Latavius Murray is their guy near the goal line. He could easily morph into their running downs back. Not that he's particularly efficient, but he's someone that doesn't fumble the ball and cost the Broncos momentum. And they need all the momentum that they can, you know, dig up. In know, but what if Chase Edmonds doesn't miss time? That's my concern here. I think it hurts Melvin Gordon. I think Melvin's the one that they're going to get sick of, yeah. not Latavius. All right, let's go to our losers here. Heath's losers are Michael Carter. I mean, you could just put the Jets Patriots game as the big loser. I, the yeah. Jets were my just loser. get a grocery cart, put both their logos in it, and push it off a cliff. And I, I'll just say before we get into the Jets as your losers, you have Carter and Garrett Wilson. Uh, there were three games that had kind of a weather alert today, and uh, two of them were kind of be- were terrible offensively. And the Giants game was the third. And it had the most mild weather of the three. But the two bad, you know, kind of windy games were Jets, Patriots, and Panthers, Ravens. So let's maybe just keep that in mind. But, uh, Heath, your thoughts on the Jets. Your other loser is Foster Morrow, who had one catch. Uh, Your thoughts on the Jets? Uh, Their offense is a complete and utter disaster. Zach Wilson looked awful. Um, There was no consistent... um, Target share for Garrett Wilson. I thought he'd kind of establish himself as the clear number one. He was not treated as the clear number one. They scored three points, and they're not making a concerted effort to get it to their best player on offense. Michael Carter looked like he'd found something as a runner against the Bills, had nothing, and basically played equally with James Robinson. There's not a person on this team that you can feel good about starting. Oh, man. I'm not going to believe that. I think that they ran into a very, very tough matchup this week against the Patriots. And the Patriots knew to take away Garrett Wilson. And look, they play Chicago next. And Chicago's going to know that Garrett Wilson is going to be someone that they have to pay attention to as well. But I think this offense comes back and and actually, like, gets first downs. Only it's six first downs the entire game. They're going to get more of that. They'll convert more third downs next week. Garrett Wilson will get more targets next week. I'm not ready to run away from Garrett Wilson. You want to call him a loser and say he's more of a flex now? Sure. I don't think you can look at him as a top 20 receiver. But I I, I bet things turn around for him. Carter will have some better games. I just ran into a good defense that was very well prepared, and they had no counterpunch, and Zach Wilson was absolutely awful. And I was hoping that they had found something in Wilson in their game against Buffalo, and that was not the case. Okay, what 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 do you have to say? I, I've got nothing else. Okay, let's go. For uh, Foster Morrow. My only question for him is: he does get the Seahawks, who allow the most fantasy points to tight ends. Streamer. What do you That's think? It. Basically, did nothing until did he, I don't think he had a catch until overtime. He had one right. catch in the entire game. Yeah, a complete disaster. He <laughs> had two targets until I agree. He was. I, I mean, He's I don't. I, I really. I, mean, I, I understand that. Maybe the Seahawks will be the magic elixir. I'm not. No. No. He is a touchdown or bust tight end. All right. Dave's losers are, I guess, the sponsor of this segment, Adam Thielen. He's on this uh, a lot. Lamar yeah. Jackson and Daryl Henderson. Adam Thielen, three targets. And I think it's nine. It's what, eight or more targets in all three games for Hawkinson? Nine or more, maybe? I don't know. No, that can't be. But I'll tell you what it is. Hold on. Uh, it, so Thielen, Lamar Jackson, and Daryl Henderson are your losers. All right, Thielen got the Patriots on Thursday, and what are your thoughts? Forget it. He's he's his A dot crashed in this game. Everything crashed for Minnesota, so maybe it's not quite fair to call anybody from the Vikings a loser because the Cowboys were in Kirk Cousins' face all game long. Um, at least nine targets in each game for TJ Hawkinson. Going from Detroit to Minnesota, as you might have predicted, was a great thing for TJ Hawkinson for fantasy 
it's turned Adam Thielen into someone you might cut. How do you feel good about a wide receiver that's not getting his catches in the last three games? Three, five, and two. He was never a big yardage guy anymore. His touchdowns, zero, zero, and zero. He has two touchdowns all year. What are you keeping this guy on the roster for? You could almost make the case for Demarcus Robinson to be a oh, better contributor wow. to your fantasy we'll team. Yes. Then Adam. Okay, Thielen. go ahead. You, you tell me straight up. You're dropping Adam Thielen for Demarcus Robinson. I it, I don't know if I'm going to exactly do that, but I know that Demarcus Robinson's getting more targets, at least two in the last three games, and he's doing more with them than Adam Thielen. I, I mostly agree. I will just say that like everything you just said about Adam Thielen is true of George Pickens. I think Adam Thielen has more catches over the last three weeks than George Pickens. Let's see. Like, Probably. there's like, but 70. Pickens has more yards. He's certainly more explosive downfield. Pickens has a zero catch game against Philadelphia. But three, five, and two, he's got three, four, and zero. Yeah, I mean, look, I, sure, it's I a great reason to Thielen. to keep Adam Thielen over George Pickens. No, I think that talking about George Pickens as a future number two wide receiver and Adam Thielen as droppable is putting more distance between the two of them than what their actual production would suggest. Okay. I'm I'm saying that the upside with Pickens is better than whatever Thielen's got left because I don't think it's that much. And really, I think with the dip, you asked, you know, what's changed last week? You asked Heath, what's changed? Because Thielen, you know, he was getting this was the first time since week one that he hasn't gotten seven to nine targets. I think what's changed is Hawkinson. It's just Hawkinson, of course. Is a much bigger part of the passing game than anyone and else. Had I, I wonder if it stays that way because Hawkinson was terrible today. Everybody he, was terrible. He had today. two yeah. touchdowns in that game. I know, the but one time they got in not, the red zone, they're not getting away from them. Uh, the second one was hard to catch, right? I mean, you're talking about the yeah. one side of the goal line. Yeah, the first one was a drop. He drops a touchdown for sure. All right, yeah. Daryl Henderson, Dave, I guess the question is, there's a caveat ever, here. Are we ever going to have a Rams running back? We can rely on this year. No, I, I don't think so. But I, if Henderson was benched for performance and not for injury, then you've got to, lose all confidence in him being a factor in this offense. Akers actually ran halfway decent, averaged over four yards per carry, had a number of pretty decent runs, and they also went to Kyron Williams. He had 5.1 yards per carry. He had a couple of I don't know if he had a couple. He had the 17 yard run. I'm not sure if there was a lot else after that, and I know that Kyron Williams can contribute in the passing game. He just didn't in this game. Furthermore, if Stafford's out for a while, I almost think that like all Rams can be on the loser list because I don't see this offense with John Wolford or Bryce Perkins being anything special uh, to help fantasy managers out. It's, it's just a mess. It's a lost cause. The offensive line's terrible. We'll see about Henderson because Henderson played four snaps in the first quarter. He actually started the game and then he vanished, you yeah. know? So okay. I don't, if, if there's an injury involved, then he's not a loser for that, but we don't know when he'll come back. And even if he does, how can you feel good starting him, starting any Rams running back? All right, uh, we are getting getting called out here. Uh, Schaefer, people want a poll. No poll today. We don't usually do. Do we usually do polls on the Sunday night? I don't know, but uh, people want a, a poll. So Schaefer's we can poll. we can tweet one. It's so good. No, he he comes up with the best YouTube polls. So I'm just gonna sit back and let him do his thing. Get something get something going there. Uh, also, if we get enough likes, ooh, Keenan Allen made a catch. If we get enough likes. We will give away a Paramount Plus month, a uh, free month of Paramount Plus. So let's do that. Uh, please hit that like button, and uh, we'll check in on that in a little bit. All right. With that said, some of the almost touchdowns, I guess we can go through. Harrison Bryant had a tough day. He had a, should have had a two-touchdown game. Uh, tight end for the Browns. Uh, Kendall Hinton came up a yard short of a touchdown, which really would have, which would have helped uh, Russell Wilson. I like your comment in the notes on Harrison Bryant. He dropped a touchdown, but Jacoby Brissett threw it 5,000 miles per <laughs> that, hour. That's true. I've seen that so many times this year yes. for Jacoby Brissett. He just yeah, throws he's, so hard. It's really he's weird. He's got a strong arm. And then you have that in your notes that Farrell Brown dropped a better thrown ball on the very yes. next play. Jacoby Brissett balled out a little bit from what I saw anyway. But um, let's see. TJ Hawkinson, Dalton Schultz had one hand on the ball in the end zone. Uh, George Pickens would have had a huge game. Dropped a 49-yard touchdown pass. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So he, he very easily could have had three. Pickett also missed him wide open. And Pickens tried to adjust and fell down. Yes. Nobody yes, around him in the right. end zone. Yeah. 
Oh, wait. Wait, what was that? W- which play? Pickett missed Pickens. On a deep ball? And then Pickens yes. fell down. That I believe there was a holding penalty on that. There was. That's yeah, really yeah. So if the guy scores a touchdown and there's a holding penalty, is that an almost touchdown? Yes. Okay, yes. but so if you fall almost, down in the end zone and miss the touchdown, okay, it doesn't count. Almost, almost touchdown. Atlanta 27, Chicago 24. We'll go right to the games. Heath, believe it or not, for the Falcons and the Bears. Justin Fields can keep this up against the Jets, Packers, Eagles, and Bear, and Bills. I mostly believe it, provided that he's healthy. I mean, that's the one thing you've got to start thinking about now is that is he going to start taking a beating behind that offensive line? Well, he takes a beating because of his style of play, right? Sure. Well, but that's the point is that if if that's going to continue to happen because he's not getting even, you know, adequate protection, then it, it, it could be problematic. But I thought he threw the ball mostly well early on in the game, and then he kind of fell apart later in the game. So Mooney Mooney got off to a huge start. It, it, he, Mooney was set up for a monster game, and then he was forgotten about. It was crazy. I think he had an almost touchdown. I didn't feel to miss him. I put that in my notes, but I don't remember the play, so that's why I didn't. I didn't, I didn't see. I only saw the very beginning of that game. I said, "Oh, I remember the play." Fields missed Darnell Mooney on what would have been a very long touchdown. Yes, he was open downfield and and was not a great throw. Um, I you know I, like, he's not doing so much with his arm. It's just he can run on anyone. So he's got he scored about 25 points today. I certainly can believe that he can average that uh, against this tough competition. If not, better. yeah. If it's what he's done the last three weeks, I would say no. If it was just today, then I then I could believe that. Believe it or not, same question with David Montgomery. He's gonna have to score. I mean, it's he's he's well. No, he had 110, yeah, yeah, 120 yeah. yards today. He. Yeah, he had 54 receiving yards, but he had 17 carries for 67 yards. So you you know he's not going to tear it up on the ground. I, I don't think um, he's that much different than James Conner. I think he's a, a yeah, mid, high-end, mid-range, number two running back. I'm not sure if he'll play as many snaps as James Conner, but they're both playing a ton of snaps. It was 79% for David Montgomery, almost every third and fourth down, four or five snaps inside the 10. He's getting all the all the work that you want your fantasy running back to get. Yeah, it's it was nice to see twenty touches for David Montgomery. He got the touchdown, and yeah, the great total yard, great game for David Montgomery. Um, Montgomery or Pollard, rest of season. Pollard. Yeah, that one's closer. Drop or hold Cole Komet with uh, the Jets on tap. I'm I'm holding and potentially starting. I, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't drop him for Foster Moreau against the Seahawks, but this I. I, think you're just I don't think I'm doing it for like Jawan Johnson either. Uh, he, he had all non-running backs in yards in receiving. <laughs> Montgomery led the team in receiving with 54. Komet was second with 35. Yeah, he had an awesome one-handed catch down the seam while getting hit. So I, I, I don't know how many snaps Chicago played. I have five snaps inside the 10. You would have hoped for a couple of targets for Cole Komet, at least in the red zone. Um I don't know. Probably just not the best. Obviously not the best game for him. I, I'm still going to give him another shot next week. Okay, last thing on this game is Cordero Patterson. Had the punt yeah. return touchdown. You probably didn't get any points for that. He had 12 touches. You should have. If like, if like just, just take this moment to say, if in your league there that did not happen, make a mental note to fix that before next year. Because if a guy scores a touchdown, it should score you fantasy points. Whether you recovered a fumble, returned a kick, returned a punt, touchdowns are the most important thing in a football game. It's literally scoring points. If that does not score you fantasy points, then your league is broken. Then why not not give him return yards points? I have no problem with that. In the the league that I started 20 years ago, we do get return yard points. (laughs) What is it? What's the scoring for that? It's cloud. It's uh, one for every 35 kickoff return yards and 15 punt return yards. Well, it was, I said it was a punt return. It was a kickoff return. He is the right. most in NFL history. Well, yep. Sorry about that. Um, all right. Anyway, what do you think about him in leagues where you don't get points for that? You know, every league. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see the snap count, but he played fewer than 40% of the snaps in each of his first two games back. He's obviously uh. splitting. Yeah, he he was eighty two percent started. Should he be more in the sixty percent start range? What do you think for for Patterson? He's in the Latavius Murray range. Oh, okay. 
He's close to that. I think people are going to be more excited to still start Patterson. He did see more snaps this week. It was 51%, but it wasn't enough to lead the Falcons. Tyler Algier led the way, 53% of the snaps. Algier also played seven of 10 snaps on third and fourth downs. And uh, they, they went from four running backs to three this week, and Caleb Huntley barely played. So maybe they're kind of settling in with Algier and Patterson um, working in a tandem together. I, Patterson's going to be a low end number two running back. People are still going to be excited about big play potential, short yardage potential. He played three or four snaps inside the 10 today. Okay. So uh, let's that will move on from this game real quick. We'll check in on the YouTube poll. This is a terrific poll. Which player are you most concerned about after week 11? Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Saquon Barkley, or Justin Jefferson? And one player has 53% of the votes. Lamar Jackson. Yes. For sure. Yeah. We'll get to everyone on that list in a moment here. Our next game is Balt up oh, Baltimore 13, Carolina three. Now we already talked about Lamar Jackson, so you can rewind or you can check the time codes for that. But uh, Heath, what do we got for Baltimore 13, Carolina three? Yeah. we talked about Demarcus Robinson too. I guess I'd say, believe it or not, like the jets, you shouldn't feel good about starting any Panthers. I think the only time you can feel good about it. So I mostly believe this, but if, if there's a matchup that looks good for Foreman, where you think he's got a shot to get you north of 15 touches, you start him. Everybody else, no. Not until not until Darnold's under center, which, I, I, first of all, I can't believe I'm saying such a thing, that Sam Darnold is going to be like the, the secret key to unlock the Panthers' offense. Like it's some magical movie that you, you watch on Lifetime. But, um, yeah, I just, I, it, it's just, it's such a pathetic situation. For this offense, it's hard to get excited about anybody other than Foreman when the matchup's right. They've got Denver next week. I think that's an okay matchup. I think they've got a chance to feed Foreman in that game. Well, it's not like they were getting blown out in this game. They lost 13-3. to They were in it pretty much the whole game, but the Ravens always... They couldn't run it. Yeah, they could not. The clock and Foreman had 11 carries for 24 yards. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess Foreman's the only guy I'm really looking at. Uh, I don't think he's... On being, I don't think he's had his last good game. Uh, Terrace Marshall, by the way, had 76 yards on six targets. He had 52 of those yards on Carolina's last possession of the game, and they were down by 10 points. So it was a miserable game for him. It was a bad game. DJ Moore's 96% roster. Do we drop him? Because he has Denver next week, and then he has a bye. Yes. He's droppable for sure. All right. Um, Kenyon Drake, any thoughts on the, on the Ravens running backs? Uh, it, was, it was disappointing that he shared as much as he did with Justice Hill. Um, he played 50% of the snaps. Justice Hill was in on 41%. He almost had a touchdown. Did you have him on your almost touchdown list? No, I should have. Yeah, I got stopped at the one. and then Yeah, he had a, he had a long run, a 29-yard run. He looked good on the run. And I, I believe he had the first carry on goal to go. And yes. he didn't get in. And then Lamar Jackson took it in himself. Yes. That so. is what happened. We'll see if Gus Edwards comes back next week. Maybe this was a good thing for Gus Edwards. All right. Uh, pretty much any concerns at all about Mark Andrews? Not no. with eight targets. Six catches, 63 yards. Not a bad game. Not a great game. We're we'll hoping for Jackson to find him again, and that'll help Jackson and Andrews. When we come back, we'll talk about the Bills and the Browns and the rest of the slate. We'll be right back on Fantasy Football today. Buffalo 31 and Cleveland 23. Jacoby Brissett, a 30-point game. Probably not going to matter much longer, um, but they are three and seven. Yikes. Uh, anyway, Heath, what do we got for this game? Uh, believe it or not, Donovan Peoples-Jones is a must-start wide receiver. I mean, he's pretty close to it. I, I think when the bye weeks are here, he is. And when the bye weeks are not, he's still in the absolute high-end number three PPR flex range. I'm just loving neutral sight Amari Cooper. He was very good on neutral side. I'm glad that that <laughs> snow happened. 113 yards, two touchdowns. I really like the narrative for Peoples Jones this week. He's a born and born and raised in Detroit. Went to Michigan. Homecoming yeah. game, a surprising homecoming game. He was very excited about it, and he actually was having a pretty bad game until their last possession. They were trailing right. 15 points late in the fourth quarter, and on that drive, he had 22 yards and a touchdown. Before that, it was uh, what 39 yards, no touchdowns on four targets. Yeah. It was a it was a rough game. So you kind of got bailed out by Peoples Jones at the end, but I, I don't think that's who the real DPJ is. I think he's someone that is 
a usual part of the Browns offense. I'm I'm a little shocked actually that he only had six targets in a game where they, the Browns, couldn't run the football. Yeah. No concerns, I'm assuming, about Nick Chubb, right? Nope. You'll start him next week as if he had 100 yards this week. They've got Tampa Bay, so it'll probably be another matchup where Brissett will have to throw a decent amount. He's not going to throw 41 times. And then Houston after that, and that's going to be with Deshaun Watson. On the other side of this, believe it or not, Gabe Davis, Gabe Davis is a consistent number two, low-end number two wide receiver. He is no longer a boomer bust flex. He is a basically must start guy, Gabe Davis. Why can't we call him a boomer bust number two wide receiver? But look at Heath on Heath's face. Is what did he do to deserve this? Right? No, I'm trying to. I I'm just like it was not that. It was what did I miss? Right? Yeah, let's well, same thing. Um, like he had. Do you have seven targets in this game? In five catches for 68 yards on seven targets. So he scored 11.8 PPR points. That's you can say don't believe you can say you don't believe it and no. yeah I, do, I don't I don't believe that um, I think he is what he has always been he has top twelve upside every single week he has outside the top forty downside every single week he's gonna live in that five to seven target range most weeks there will be a couple outliers um, I'll probably start him next week against the Lions I won't the next week against the Patriots if I was guessing. That's probably what people are going to do. He had a drop inside the 10 on a big third down. That was early on in the game. Um, he had a huge play that got the Bills into Cleveland territory right toward the end of the first half. That was a 27-yard gainer. He had another 17-yard gain with a roughing penalty. That really helped push them. He helped get them going a little bit on offense, yeah. and this game was weird. Hey, it, what do you think? Do you believe it or not? Do they say, I, no. I, I believe he's a boomer bust number two wide receiver. I like what I've seen from Gabe Davis the last two weeks. He has not had that same type of profile. That is why I brought it up. He's been a little bit more of a normal wide receiver, I think. <laughs> you know, not just relying on on deep balls. Because Josh Allen didn't throw a single deep ball in week 10, and I don't know about this week. Uh, I have to look at that. But without that, I don't know if it's an elbow, right? But without that it, part of the game, he's still getting consistent looks and – turning in decent performances. He's a factor near the end zone. I'm, I, yeah. I'm probably more. He had another end zone target this week. Yeah, I'm the more encouraged. Before the digs yeah. touchdown. Most people would be, I guess, on Gabe Davis. I just, I'm seeing a little bit of versatility in the game that we didn't see earlier this year. That's right. And also, if you want to know what, what it is with Gabe Davis, when he has his good games, you basically just have to look at Josh Allen's passing yards. Um, because when Allen throws for a lot of yards, Gabe Davis has big games. He threw for 197 yards today, and Gabe Davis had 68 yards, which is pretty good. Um, what did Diggs have today? Diggs had 48 yards. So Dawson Knox actually led the way with 70. So that's the thing. I mean, when Josh Allen's been good, not just good for fantasy, but prolific passing the ball, Gabe Davis has been there. When Allen has struggled in that department, Gabe Davis has usually struggled. So just something to keep in mind. Um, all right, Detroit 31, Giants 18. What do you got? Believe it or not, the Giants will not be favored in another game this season. Yeah, hundred percent believe it. They may not win another game, and I'm not even joking. Uh, I don't. I don't know how uh, that applies to fantasy. Per uh, it's Heath's uh, Joel. Uh, That's all it is. No, it 100 percent applies to fantasy. <laughs> like Saquon Barkley, are we worried? He's gonna be playing from behind you all can, the time. Yeah, not not gonna get 36 carries. This is the this is the sell high well, profile. It was, Tough yeah. schedule coming up. Offensive line falling apart. Offense falling apart. It was the sell high profile. I it do wonder does Dayball deserve credit? Has he earned enough credit to say, all right, he'll figure out a way to get Saquon Barkley going? He won't have another game quite this bad. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. He won't have another game quite this. Well, he might, but he, you know, he'll have a lot of he'll have good games. It's not gonna stink. But our, I was arguing last Monday, or you know, a seven six days ago about who rb1 was and someone said barkley neither of you this is on the monday show and i was like no they're gonna start losing games so yeah it, it wasn't deserved anyway but i actually look everyone's gonna start barkley you guys want to talk about slayton because it is i mean i think honestly i know people are going to pay attention to the interceptions i think daniel jones played pretty well today he threw for over 300 threw for 341 yards 
And now you got no Wandale. So is Darius Slayton? Believe it or not, Darius Slayton is a must-start player. He's, He's a number, a number three, three wide receiver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we agree. <laughs> okay, on the other side of the ball, uh, like, everybody is what they are. Swift barely plays, and he scores every week. St. Brown, you disappointed with St. Brown? Seven for 76 on eight targets? Kind of thought he'd tear them up. Yeah. You think he's going to start scoring more touchdowns? What do you think, Heath? We might be at the point to where like it's good for him if some of the weapons are gone, but he could use a little bit of help. Um, Jared Goff could certainly use a little bit of help. You know who's and killing they've me? just kind of had a weird thing where they keep getting to the one yard line and then they give it to Jamal Williams. Back it um, <laughs> but I don't. I also didn't ever really believe that the Lions are one of the best offenses in football, and I still don't. So I don't think he's going to be a high touchdown guy rest of season. I think he's just number two wide receiver. All right. Gabe Davis or Amonra St. Brown rest of season? Amonra St. Brown, because Gabe Davis is not a number two wide receiver. How about uh, it's St. Brown? Okay. Uh, how about rest of season? Yeah, Amonra St. Brown. Or look, scrolls through notes. Amari Cooper. 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 All right, let's go to the Saints and the Rams. 27 Gross. 20 Saints. I can't believe this game had so many points in it. Yeah, no kidding. I I don't ever like to say that people quit, but it's just it's hard for me to find any other explanation for the Rams defense other than that, that, that they're just I mean good grief. What an embarrassment. Um believe it or not, Jarvis Landry matters. No. No. I don't believe it. How many targets did he have? 4. Well, he had a, it's like 20% though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, believe it or not, sell high on Chris Olave. No. If you can. I think you can. What do you mean sell high? Gabe Davis. He, I'd much rather have Olave. I'd rather have Davis. I think I I think I'd rather have Olave too, but it's going to be close between them. Well, the thing about Olave is, is he was having another ho hum day. He caught he caught a deep ball, beautiful play, great catch and throw, and it was on Jalen Ramsey. Um, it was a fantastic throw from Andy Dalton. Yeah, it really was. It yes. really was. Who but played a fantastic some, game? Like, could you say some nice things about Andy Dalton, please? Twenty one to twenty five for two hundred sixty yards and three touchdowns. It doesn't not get much better than that. I bet he had close to a perfect passer rating. Um, One forty nine point six. He's got the Niners and Tampa in his next two games both of which on the road, and then a bye. So A is Dalton, a bye week replacement quarterback. I'm going to say that you won't love what you get. B is Olave a sell high. You better believe it because that schedule over the next three games is not going to make you feel good. All right. They have two home games what would left. You sell them for, Dave? If not Gabe Davis. Um, well, you know, maybe I should consider selling them for Gabe Davis. Maybe I was wrong on that. Maybe. Yeah. About Gabe I'd go try yeah. maybe try and find one of those Seattle wide receivers and go and DK get them. We talk about them all the time. Yeah, I think I'm going to go there. What do you have against DK Metcalf? What did he do? Who who hurt you? He he he's he not doesn't done believe in I don't have the magic elixir reliability. that makes me look at low end wide receiver three production and think he's a must start guy. Low end wide receiver three. What is he? Wide receiver thirty three yeah, in the season or something? Just, you're definitely not taking account the game that he left early with an injury. Definitely not. Well, I don't know how many of the other guys in the rankings left not games early many. with injuries. Also, not that many. And he leads the NFL in end zone targets, I believe. Uh, so come on, least he, you know, you know that DK Metcalf is not a low end number three. I know that DK he has bit, but he is a number three wide receiver. That's the point. On a per we, game, we basis. ranked him as a number three wide receiver at the beginning of the season. He's performed like a number three wide receiver, and he gets talked about like he's not a number three wide receiver. You think I could get Jeff Wilson for Chris Olave? Yes. I don't know if I. I don't know if I can. Would you do that? You'd want. Oh, that? you one hundred percent could. I would. Yeah, not, I think. But. All right, we're gonna table our Rams discussion yeah, until we find out about Matthew Stafford and. Um, I think the Rams I don't know if there's much of a discussion regardless. to have. What well, I mean, I think Allen Robinson is pretty is relevant if Stafford plays, right? 
Uh, you know what he is. Higby's relevant. Yeah. You know. All right. Uh, any thoughts on Kamara, guys? Believe it or not, Alvin Kamara is a running back who is not great and should not be a must-star running back. I was going to attempt to make the sell-high case for Alvin Kamara last week, and I chickened out on it. And now I'm wishing that I hadn't, because if I had made the case, and it was a pretty good case, then maybe people could have sold high and gotten something for him. It was just he was coming off of a bad game, and now he's had another bad game. You heard the schedule that's coming up for the Saints. I think you've got to view him as a number two running back. And what? Like a top 16-ish type of running back. What did he score today? Like 12-ish. Eight 12, non-PPR, 12 PPR. Uh, really, give him an extra point because decimal was 8.9, 12.9. You know the biggest problem for Camaria is he has scored in one game this year, and it was three touchdowns against the Raiders. I was going to say that was his best performance in November. What was this game? Yeah, I know. It wasn't, yeah. wasn't very good. He's had three disappointing games in a row. I mean, would you? T- I would not take Tony Pollard over Kamara, would you? I don't think I would, but I think they're going to be closer in value than maybe they've ever, well, obviously, than they've ever been before. Kamara's going to be an unpopular player in trade circles this week. All right, New England 10, Jets 3. I mean, do we have to really? Uh, believe it or not, oh. Damian Harris is a problem for Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, I do not believe it. I believe he had one or re- really like one really good run. He had a 30 yard run. You, you want to take a you want to take a stab at how many what percentage of snaps Damian Harris had today? Yeah, 25. That's exactly correct. Yeah. yeah. So Ramondre played 76 percent of the snaps. He played each of the 16 snaps on third and fourth downs. The Patriots. Did not give any snaps inside the 10 to Damian Harris. They did not give any snaps inside the 10 to Ramondre Stevenson because they had no snaps inside the 10. But if they did, I would imagine that Ramondre would have had those two. Okay, but he is going to get fewer carries, but so reliable. Right now, extremely reliable in the passing game. Um, Do you guys still view Jacoby Myers the same way? He now has 60 or fewer yards in five straight games. Some of that was zappy, but I don't know. A little, a little disappointing lately. How do you view Jacoby Myers? I think he's wide receiver. I I don't even know if you can feel great starting him in non PPR. I thought this was a pretty good matchup for him in non PPR. And it wasn't that great, but in full PPR, he's right. I think he's still a number two wide receiver. So you guys would take Jacoby Myers over DK Metcalf? I don't know if I'd do that. Yes. Heath would. Okay. Um, all right, Philadelphia 17, Colts 16. I called this upset. I Well, I almost, called this almost upset. I picked this upset. Almost You're not the only one. What, really? I picked the Raiders, too. No, the Colts. I picked huh? the Colts. Oh, okay. Through. I thought you were talking. About I picked that. the Colts to beat the Eagles. So. No, I I picked the Colts to cover. But the Colts oh. didn't beat the Eagles. I know, but they almost did. I deserve something. Oh. Believe it or not, I deserve something. <laughs> this is very similar to how I feel when you said that Gabe Davis is no longer boom bust after this week. <laughs> well, Heath, is this what? It was a good uh, pick. Heath, is this what you were worried about with Paris Campbell? Because you were the one guy that was not really on board on Campbell this week. Yeah, I mean, so it's what I said. It's that if he's basically had one good game this season where they didn't throw the ball 44 times or more. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that Jeff Saturday is ever going to want to throw the ball 44 times. So I I am concerned that if he's a 20 to 25% target share guy, that makes him a seven target a game guy if they're throwing 30 passes a game. Probably five for 50 most weeks. You hope he scores. He's not that different than Adam Thielen or Deontay Johnson. One of the things about Campbell that I was a little worried about was the flukish nature of some of his production. Last week, he had a long touchdown. It was a catch and run. This week, he almost had the exact same thing. He had a 31 catch. Just a really good throw by Matt Ryan to set them up near the end zone. But he couldn't score on that play. You'll settle for the 11 PPR points, but I think you kind of have to revisit him 
more of a number three receiver. Yeah, uh, but it's, I mean, all he did today was not score. He had the same type of stats. He had five for 67. That's a little bit worse than what he had been. But all sure. I said when I picked him up, I said, if you take, I kept saying it, if you take away the touchdowns, he's about 12 PPR fantasy points. He scored 11.7 today. So he came through. Well, I think the difference was he had seven, 10, and seven catches in those three games. Mm-hmm. Two, two fewer catches per game would be a pretty big deal. Yeah. All right. Um, but he's a big part of the offense and a number three receiver, right? We could say that. Number three. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think they'll throw around this amount, if not a little bit more, most weeks. And I, th- I think that'll include next week against Pittsburgh. All right, Alave or Raparis Campbell? Oh, sorry, Alave oh. or Michael, Michael Pittman, my bad. Alave. I think I'm going to come out on Alave, too. Okay, let's talk about the Eagles. Miles Sanders is struggling a bit. Where is he in the Tony Pollard scale? Um, for Sanders, well it's two straight games with fewer than six PPR fantasy points. Really, well behind him? Okay. I might take two, Tony Pollard over two Miles Sanders. <laughs> okay, how about Zeke or Miles Sanders? I'm taking Sanders over Zeke. Probably Sanders. It's close. He's closer. I would say he's closer to Zeke than he is to Pollard. I just want to see how many games in a row it's been. It's just two, I think. A stinker for Sanders. Yeah, two. two. It's really, I, I think it's not that different than the number three wide receivers we were talking about. He just has to score. Yeah. There's no catches. He he's not going to catch the ball. Four games. He's probably not going to get enough carries to get you to 100 yards rushing. You're going to need a touchdown. I almost feel like you need like the, the the right kind of game script where Philadelphia just gets out to an early lead and they just pace the rest of the way for Sanders to be really good for fantasy. Last week against the Commanders, they barely had the ball in the first half and they couldn't get anything going with it. He had 12 carries. They struggled very early in this game. They didn't put things together until well into the second half. And... Sanders had 13 carries for 47 yards. I think this is a good Colts defense. Their D-line was messing with Jalen Hurts all game long. All it right. really wasn't until Hurts started rushing that the Eagles finally got back on track. And I wonder if the coaching staff notices that, and that impacts Sanders moving forward. Good job by Devontae Smith. First game without Dallas Goddard, 78 yards. A.J. Brown had a rough game, including a fumble, 60 yards, and he fumbled. And I just want to say that... Uh, but that's just an Azer stat. I called that upset, Colts over the Eagles. It, it was, wasn't an upset. It was close enough to be an Azer stat upset. Washington 23, Houston 10. Uh, I've got a couple. Um, one... Antonio Gibson will have more carries than Brian Robinson moving forward. I think I can believe that. Um, yeah, I believe it. Yeah. I think if McKissick comes back to Brian Robinson experiment. Well, like he's not. Ever. No, I, I don't think McKissick is coming back this year. They just put him on IR. Um, and two, Damian Pierce just hit the rookie wall. I don't think so. I mean, this was his first game. I'm not gonna. Be, I'm not gonna believe that. First, Washington's run defense has been incredible. Yes. Um, yes. He, Damian Pierce had 117 or more total yards in five of his last six games before today. 101 or more total yards in six of his last seven. So I'm just gonna say, bad game. Gets the Dolphins next week. They have a. They have a. Some. They have an interesting run defense. But I'm gonna say you can no. run on Miami. You I don't can run on it. Cleveland. Those are their next two games. Yeah, I don't believe it. I don't like what happens after the Cleveland game. Do you believe it or not, Dave? Damian Pierce has hit the rookie. No, no, I don't believe it. Uh, I'm still going to start him against Miami, going to start him against Cleveland. But if he continues to suck, I don't think you can start him against Dallas, Kansas City, or Tennessee. That's well into the fantasy playoffs. Does he have more touches this season than he had in college? All of question. college? Like the f- no, the not college. all of college. <laughs> Let's see. Probably. Probably. But... Um... I don't know. Anything? Uh, real quick thoughts on Brandon Cooks. Uh, he had a 70-yard game. I've got thoughts on him. He uh, made a really good play. It was good to see that it's like he's still capable of running fast. They yeah. just don't. Uh, they don't want to use him that way. It was on a short, a shallow crosser, and he took it up down the sideline. Um, what do you have? Yeah, 11, some... 12 PPR points. No, I think he had 10. 
He had some rushing totals. He had three for 70. Okay. 187 touches for Damian Pierce this year. That is a high uh, by a lot over what he did in college. His high in college was 123 touches in a single year. So we could have had this conversation probably like two weeks ago. Would you? Re- it, but it's an overreaction because last week he was really good. Well, it might be. I don't know. But last week he was really good. Because uh, he he fumbled, but he was going in. You know, he almost scored a touchdown against the Giants. He had a, he had a very good game against the Giants. He had 126 yards. I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, let's. Well, the wall is not gradual. The wall is the wall is a wall. <laughs> you hit the wall and you stop. Well, you have an answer, Heath. Do you believe it that uh, Damian Pierce has hit the rookie? Game? I am concerned that he is not going to be the high end number two running back that he has been for most of this season over the rest of the season. Would you guys rather have Brandon Cooks or Paris Campbell rest of season? Paris Campbell. Yeah, it's Campbell, but I don't know that there's a huge difference. Okay, let's go to the late games. Las Vegas 22 and Denver 16. Ugh. Um, yeah. Yeah, really. Like, believe it or not, the, just give up on the Broncos passing game. If they can't do it against the Raiders, they can't do it against anyone. I think you've got to believe it. I think... The only guy that you can say is salvageable is Cortland Sutton, just because he can get you between 10 and 15 PPR points per week. That makes him a number three receiver. Makes him somebody worth rostering. I, I totally believe it, Heath, but Wilson, one one positive here is that Russell Wilson, five of his six highest passing yardage games have come in the last six weeks. Uh, he's you know He's been respectable there. Last three weeks, 252, 286, 247. And actually, he had a very, you know, pretty good game. 24 of 31. He had the almost touchdown. He just didn't score. But they're, they, they're not good. And every, you know, I feel like half the time I saw him, he was under duress. So their line is just such a problem. It's, right? it's a problem, and he hates getting hit, so he's getting rid of the ball as quickly as he can. That was a problem late in this game, too. They had a third and long play. The clock was ticking down. They could have just run a running play to get the clock down to like 120, something like that, for the Raiders to try and tie the game with. And instead, he just throws an incomplete pass because there's pressure on him. He doesn't even take the sack. <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing at Kelsey. Uh, he's funny. But, okay, so, yeah, we we believe that. Although it was a good game for Cortland Sutton. As long as Jerry Judy's out, okay. you can start him. You know, five catches, 80 yards, it's not bad. As long as Jerry Judy's, Judy's out, you can start him. Devontae Adams is absolutely on fire. He has three straight games with 13 or more targets, three straight games with 126 or more yards. He is just killing it. And Derek Carr, guys, has scored 21, 22, basically, or more points in three straight games when we basically buried him. So, And he just did it against Denver. And I needed that overtime play, obviously, but... Cars got Seattle, the Chargers, the Rams, the Patriots next up. Is he is he back to being in the circle of trust? He was never in the circle of trust. Mm. He, is, he, is, he is back in the uh the triangle of consideration. Okay. <laughs> Love the geom- geometry. All right, let's go to um Cincinnati 37, Pittsburgh 30. So we did Najee. We did Samaji. Um uh, I got one. Believe it or not, Joe Burrow is matchup proof even without Jamar Chase. He was this week. He played great. Hell yeah. Did, did an awesome job. I, I think you can say that, but I think we might get Jamar Chase back next week. I think that's what the Bengals' goal was and why they didn't put him on IR in the first place was that he'd be available for their game against Tennessee. I hope. I hope that winning this game causes them to be a little bit patient. Like everybody thought he had to go on IR for. I hate when they try to say this guy's a superhuman healer. He's going to come back. Like you're playing at Tennessee this week. You're planning on being in the playoffs. You have the Chiefs in week 13. Should probably save him for week 13 at the earliest. What if they just use him next week sparingly? And oh, they get him. That's a, the worst case scenario for fantasy. Well, that would be for fantasy. I don't want to get off track here. Joe, Joe, believe it or not, Joe Burrow is matchup proof. I believe it. I don't know if beating the Steelers makes you matchup proof, but he's we were pretty talking all kinds matchup. of greatness about the Steelers defense today. All week we've been talking about they, how tough this matchup was for Joe Burrow. Don't down talk them now because he had a good game against Come on, them. He's Joe Burrow. He's earned this. 
There are not 12 quarterbacks that you're starting over him. He's a must-start guy. He might be a top five guy. He was freaking tearing it up. Well, I think that's the question. Is he a top five guy or a top 12 guy? Because I don't think there was any debate about him being a top 12 guy. Mar Jackson or Joe Burrow, rest of season. I think I go Burrow now. I I had Burrow today and Burrow rest of season. All right. So he's obviously in the circle. He is in the diamond of uh, delight. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Diamond of dominance. There it is. That's better. Okay. Uh is drop Pryor in there. Drop her hole. Oh, oh hell yeah. He's gotta be. He's in the circle of trust, that's for sure. Yep. Shape start is, tight end. What shape is Deontay Johnson in? The garbage can of <laughs> hell. Drop him or hold him. Drop city. Yeah, I mean, we've dropped like 17 wide receivers on this show, so it will be interesting to see what the waiver wire looks like on Thursday morning. Um, But he's not a must-hold, certainly. More like Dion Ney. I cannot believe how freaking inappropriate my shape reference was. It was a total accident. I am very sorry about that. But Dallas 40, Minnesota 3. Um, No, serious. I never in a million years would have said that. Ever on purpose. So we started with Ron Rivera's unit. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, <laughs> here we I'm are. actually sorry about that. That was totally wrong. I should have done that. We should talk uh, about it more, though. Let's finish up here. There's going to be a baby in nine months. Dallas 40 and Minnesota 3. She's unbelievable. Okay. Uh, Dallas believe it or not, Tony Pollard's actually a top 12 running back rest of the season. Zeke's there. It's going to make me hedge a little bit on saying that he's top 12. Can we can we dial that number back a little bit? Nope. Nope. We gotta be 12. Then I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. So good though. I think I believe it. First off, I mean it's not like there's 12 good running backs. We're not oh you know what? This is such a miss on my part. I am so sorry. If you stayed around for an hour and 12 minutes of perversion Justin Jefferson has turf toe. How concerned are we about this? Development? I didn't even know. I didn't catch that. That's amazing. I didn't know. A, uh, that would be a huge problem if he's got turf toe. I would put that as a nine on the concernometer. Yeah, well, that's what a crappy job. Mild turf toe. Crappy job by me. What shape is his toe? I'm not. I don't want to say anything else. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. He's in the Zillinger helix of seduction. doom. <laughs> the cylinder of deduction. Uh, I think we're pretty much done here. Any concerns long term about CD Lamb or Dalton Schultz or Justin Jefferson or Dalvin Cook or anything like that? Or Kirk Cousins for that matter? No. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Uh, we're out. Thanks for watching and listening, everybody. And have a great evening. We'll talk to you tomorrow with Beyond the Box Score. See ya.